Hello and welcome back to the Colorado Rockies franchise. The last time we took on the Giants and Cardinals and also looked at some of our AA prospects and some prospect profiles. So if you haven't seen that, go back and check that out. Today we're going to start by looking at some potential draftees. It's on the 2080 rating scale, remember. And I want you guys to tell me below, of these players I'm going to show you, which one you think we should draft. Starting with Steve Flores, the right-handed starting pitcher out of Arizona. He's got a 2023 ETA, so that's not too far off at all. He looks pretty good all around. Again, remember, the 2080 rating scale, 50s average, just like it says below. Going to move to a position player here, John Moler. He switch hitting catcher. He's got a 2025 ETA. It's a little ways off. Doesn't look like he'd be the best hitter, but he's a good defensive catcher, and we don't have much depth there. Kent Shannon, 2022 ETA. That seems a little early for me. I guess it depends what he looks like, though. He says he'd be pretty high and already an elite overall. He's more of a pull hitter, it looks like. But he's pretty well rounded. Might be one of the best players in this draft. We're going to move on to a left fielder and Jeff Asimov here. 18 year old Canadian. He's a switch hitter. 2022 ETA as well. Might even be a better hitter than uh, Kent Shannon is. And that switch hitting is really nice. Looks like he hits it right up the middle, too. Leo Crespo, a 6'5 shortstop. You can't go wrong with that. He looks like he'd be a great pure hitter. Doesn't have the most power, but with that frame, you feel like he still could develop some power. Another pull hitter. 2024, a little ways off, but want to build up the whole roster anyway. Ross Reed, lefty from Canada. Another Canadian player here. 2025, so again, it's a ways off, but you need to build up the whole roster. He looks like he'd be a pretty good player as well. Third base, can't go wrong. Alex Amaya might be the best player in the draft. 2022 ETA. He's 21, though, out of the Dominican Republic. But just look at those ratings. He looks like he'd be a great player, and he has the highest ceiling with a high overall. Still might not be the best pick, though, considering he's a second baseman. Going back to starting pitching, Daryl Barth here, another 2025 guy. At the age of 21, he's a little older for a starting, you know, a starting pitcher from the other guy we looked at. Uh, Alabama he throws two two amazing fastballs though. Another starting pitcher here in Jack Hardy, the 18-year-old out of Illinois, a lefty, throws four pitches. Got a nice cutter there. It looks like they can get on the hands of righties and break away from lefties. Jack Hardy might not be a bad pick if we want to build up the rotation. But again, just tell me who you think we should draft of these guys that you've seen so far below. And because I, I honestly want to know, I don't know who I want to take yet. We have the 11th pick, actually, so just remember that. We're going to start by uh, taking on the Padres here for the first time this season. Going to win game one and lose game two. Take a look at the box scores. Game one, we'd go to uh, the 11 innings and extra innings there. Uh, we'd win two to one. And Felix Hernandez pitched pretty well, but wouldn't get a no decision, unfortunately. We lose game two, absolutely getting decimated here. Um, Marquez took the loss, but Stevenson got rocked at the end of the game, giving up seven earned runs. We're going to watch game three here between John Gray and Mike Clevenger. We're at 14-22. and 22. Padres don't even have 10 losses yet on the season. Trevor Story is actually back from injury. If you remember, he also had a little knee tweak pregame last game, but he's back now. He missed those last two games with the Padres, but he's back here. John Gray, like I said, taking the mound. Tommy Pham is going to start by popping it up. Fuentes, though, going to make a nice athletic play there to start the game. Pretty impressive there. Ruiz going to line it to over the second baseman Hampson's head there for a bloop single. And they do a hit and run with Machado getting going first to third. we got runners at the corners with one away. Will Myers going to ground it to a double play, though, as Gray avoids. And he runs there. Mike Clevenger going to take the hill for the Padres. This is the first time we're seeing him all year. Tatis actually is not starting for them. He's getting the off day, unfortunately, but I mean, we'll see him. We're going to play them a bunch. He's going to strike out the leadoff hitter Ramirez here we acquired not too long ago. Tapia going to ground it up the middle for a base hit. So we got a base runner in the first inning. Driver Story back from injury. Going to try their own hit and run, but this is just going to result in a fly out to right field. And with two away... Charlie Blackman going to ground it down the third baseline. Be a nice play by Machado to retire Blackman. Jerks in profile here, jumping to the top of the third as both pitchers pitched a good second. Gray getting the strikeout there. 
But a slow roller up the middle here is going to be a base hit for Jorge. Tommy Pham going to pop it up to the, to the catcher, though, right behind home plate for out number two. Ruiz, you got on last time. You're going to get on again here by walking. Machado now with runners on. He's going to drive it to right center field. Daza going back. It's going to be caught, though, right on, right on the warning check, right in front of it. Uh, I just wanted to show you how bad her offense has actually been. And one of the worst in the league in almost every category, which you can't be doing that when our pitching's not good. And we're playing at Coors, which is a hitter's ballpark for sure, right? Like, everybody knows that. Striking out top of here to start the bottom of the fourth, Clevenger is. We're just striking, uh, getting a fly out to Trevor Story here. This would actually carry over Will Myers' head. Would not be a fly out. Gonna roll back in a little bit and end up being a triple. Looked like it'd be a lazy flyout, but it ends up being a triple. Rockies in business with one away and a ground out to the second baseman is actually gonna drive in a run. Blackman getting the RBI ground out. Rockies got the one nothing lead. Fuentes gonna get a hold of it, but just be a flyout right in front of the warning track or one step on it. Jumping to the top of the sixth, as nothing's really happened. You know, hadn't been really going on. Nothing's just going on. Tommy Pham falling off a pit, some pitches here. Actually was like an 8 pitch at bat, 9 pitch at bat, and he's going to hit a solo home run. Tying it back up at 1. John Gray was out there with like 90 pitches to start that inning, but just got up to like 98, and that's it. The end of his day. Get a no decision unfortunately for him. Jumping to the top of the 7th. El Monte, who's in his second inning of work, Going to give up a double here to start things. Padres in business. Kim going to fly it to right field. Going to be caught by Daza, and the runner's going to tag up to third base. Runner on third, Profar going to walk. So we got runners at the corner, but we got a chance at a double play with Jorge up. Jorge is going to drive it. It looks like the outfield is playing a little shallow, and it's going to get off the wall. Daza is going to get it in pretty quickly, though. And they're going to get the uh, Jorge at third there. And he, he was lugging that out, trying for the triple. The run does score. Uh, we're going to end the bottom of the or top of the seventh there. It's three to one, but at least they got the runner at third. Point, Trevor Story here striking out. Chris Paddock, who's in the bullpen for them. Surprisingly, I did not expect to see that when I was watching this. Two quick outs here in the bottom of the seventh. Fuentes going to walk, though, bringing the tying run up to the plate in the form of Chris Owings, but he's going to strike out on a curveball. We're going to move ahead here. Perez entering the game. Hoping to bounce back a little bit here. Not pitching great at all. In the top of the ninth, facing Austin Nola. Austin Nola is going to chase a slider way out of the zone. Kim, he's going to line it to center field where Toppy is going to keep it in front of him. Be a base hit, though. Profar going to ground it to Fuentes. He's going to make a nice play here, showing off some good glove work. Unfortunately, his bat has been really bad, especially at a premier offensive position. You got the part of the order you want coming up, though, to try to tie this game up or win it with a walk-off. Facing Pagan, who's perfect 11-11 on saves this year. So it's a tall task for this Rockies top of the order. Tapia is going to chop it to the second baseman for the first out. Trevor Story now, he's going to ground it to the shortstop. No Tatis today, but shortstop still making the play. I actually don't remember who was playing at shortstop for them. Blackman's going to strike out to end the game, so the Padres win 3-1. to one. Chris Paddock would actually get the win. Tough luck for uh, John Gray. He gets that no decision. Only muster the one run and three hits. But, uh, yeah... Lose that series, like most of them. After the game, though, we're actually going to option Josh Fuentes to the minors. 168. His glove was really good, but he's, he's got to go to the minors and try to refigure out how to hit a little bit. Maybe get something going down there. Because, I mean, Matt Adams is absolutely killing it. We call, we're going to call him up. He's going to play first base versus uh, at least right-handed pitching. I don't know about lefties. At least versus righties. We're actually going to watch these, this first game against the Reds, and Austin Gomer's going to take the hill. It's a four-game series, but in game number one, Gomber taking the hill. 3 2 6 ERA. It's been pretty solid. Hope to keep that going. We need, you know, something to go well for this team. 
Jonathan India, one of the top prospects of the Reds, hitting leadoff, getting a base hit. A little bobble there by Tapia wouldn't matter, though. Jesse Winker going to swing and miss at that knuckle curve for out number one. Castellanos, who's actually, I believe, second or third in the MVP race this season, going to get a base hit between the third base shortstop, so he's having an excellent year for the Reds. Suarez going to go down swinging. So now it looks like he's one pitch away from getting out of it. Ball's going to hit off of him there, a liner off the foot. And Mishnakis going to be safe to load the bases. Hopefully Gomber's all right. Looks like he's going to wave everybody off and say he's good. But he's facing Votto here, the veteran. Votto's going to line it. Over the right fielder head and Hillard, Hilliard. It's going to end up scoring two and looks like three runs. Rodgers does not even try to throw the runner at home. It would be a three RBI double for Votto. Another ground ball at the middle here. Looks like it's going to be another run for the Reds early. The throw is just late. Oh, man, that was close. Closer than I thought it would be, but it's 4 nothing, just like that. At least McMahon keeps this one on the infield. They don't get an out, but kept it on the infield. Gomber getting rocked around here. Maybe, I, don't, I mean, maybe you can blame it on that foot. Maybe he did get hurt after getting hit on that line drive. But not pitching well. Gets out of the inning at least, though. Reds starting Sonny Gray. He's 2-0. Looking to be 3-0 after this one. Toppy is going to chop it to the second baseman to start things, unfortunately. Lineup, you see Matt Abs batting fourth today. Making his rocky debut. Looks like a decent lineup, I guess, for their what they have. Trevor Story going to get a base hit. At least giving him a base runner. Got to start somewhere to cut into this lead a little. Blackman going to drive it down the right field line. It's going to be do dove on and missed by Castellanos. Barely lands on the chalk. That was very close. Questionable call. I mean, maybe if they had a ump down the line there, they would have said he would have might have called that foul or something. But it's close. Be an RBI triple though for Blackman. And then following that, Matt Adams is going to get his first hit as a Rocky, and it's an RBI single. Making this a 4-2 game. Harold Ramirez stepping up now. He's going to ground it to Votto. He makes a nice slick play here. Turns a double play almost as the throw return throw back to first there is offline. Lucky for them, though, it would not matter. It's McMahon's going to fly out the next at bat anyway. And it's still 4-2 lead for the Reds. Gomber still out here on the hill. Going to give up a ground ball down the third baseline for a leadoff base hit. And you can see the stats. He just really does not look like he has it today. But they really need some innings. They've had an extra inning game. Bullpen's been taxed. He's going to walk Winker here. Really needs to muster something, man. They do not, do not want to wreck the pen. Somewhere going to have to start sending guys down just so we can get some fresh arms. He's going to strike out Castellanos, so though. That's a big out facing an MVP candidate there. Vigiano Suarez going to ground into a double play. Gomber does get out of it. Bottom of the second here. Hilliard up. Full count. He's going to walk on a borderline pitch. Gray does not get the call. Rogers is going to swing and miss. But Hilliard's going to steal second. So we got a runner in scoring position here. For the number nine hitter, Nunez. Nunez is going to get a hold of this. He's going to send it to deep center field. But it'd be caught deep almost right at the wall hilliard's gonna tag to third he's actually gonna round third and try to score on that he's gonna be tagged out at the plate i don't know what he was thinking trying to tag from second base and score a run it was a close play maybe if the center fielder was lollygagging it but man you keep really down two runs and he gets thrown out on that hopefully that does not come back to bite them later mike mustak is gonna get a double here to start the top of the third and Gomber just really struggling. Facing Votto. He's going to get him, though, at the slider. Tyler Stevenson, the catcher. Going to line it to center field. And this looks like it's going to be an RBI single. Toppy at least cuts that off from uh, preventing it from rolling to the wall. 5-2 to two lead, and that would be it for Gomber. He really just did not have it. They got to go to Estevez, even though he does not have the most energy. So hopefully he can just get a couple outs here. And then they'll have to go to their long man, probably. He's going to start by getting a fly out to left field where Ramirez would make the play. So we got two down. Cal Farmer, the nine hitter. He's going to try to check his swing, but he can't. He gets struck out. Moving on to the top of the fourth. Going to be a bloop here that hits off of Ramirez's glove and going to end up being a double. Sensatella's in there pitching for them now. 
So you got a one-out double for the Reds. Castellanos is going to flip this right over the shortstop's head. It's going to be in an RBI single, looks like. But he's actually going to be tagged out at home. What a throw here from Ramirez. Usually, they have him listed as a right fielder on the report, but he's playing left field usually. I'm sure that'll be switched, and he just guns Winker out of the plate. That's a big, big out there. Story going to field the ball here and get the third out, so it's still a 5-2 lead after that nice play from Ramirez. Bottom of the fifth. Gray still out here pitching, striking out Hilliard. Bottom of the Rockies order is up. Rogers going to hit a perfect here right up the middle. Just goes with the pitch, gets a one-out base hit. Nunez going to ground it on the third baseline, and it's going to be knocked down by Moustakis and end up being an infield single, and they're going to just pull Gray right there. They don't want to risk anything. And a turn to the pen. He already has 30 innings pitched out of the pen this year. Tapia going to bloop this into left center field and get down. This will be an RBI single. Runner's going to go first to third on the play. Nunez, that is. So we got runners at the corners. In a 5-3 ball game, Trevor Story's up. He's going to launch one and send it out of here. Just like that, the Rockies are back. In front, 6-3. to three, Or 6-5, to five, going from three. Who would have thought that after the way this game started? They'd be back and take a lead. Ground ball to the shortstop story right here in the top of the six ends of Tella. Still eating up some innings. Like I said, the bullpen's pretty taxed. So you really need some innings out of him. He's going to walk a guy here. So it's all right, though. India is going to strike out. And two away in the top of the six. Jesse Winker going to watch a wild pitch in the dirt. It's going to be thrown away by Nunez over the head of Adams. That was a terrible throw. Going to put a runner in scoring position. The time runs in scoring position now for that. Winker's going to launch the next pitch, though, so it wouldn't really end up mattering. Reds back in front, 7-6. to six. Since the tell might have been out there a hit or two long. Bottom of the sixth, still, still out here striking out Rockies hitters, mowing them down. DJ Anton is, uh, he's just mowing us down. Look at that, three straight, strikes out the side in the bottom of the sixth. India to ground down the third baseline. McMahon's going to make a nice, easy play here in the top of the ninth. They're moving ahead. Still the 7-6 to six ball game. Given's going to get launched on, though. This is Winker, his second home run of the game. 8-6. to six. Givens was out here in his second inning of work, so he's getting a little gassed, but he was our only option that really had energy. Facing an MVP candidate here. He's going to walk him. I mean, that might not be the worst decision. Eugenio Suarez would step up in a full count. He is going to line it over Hilliard's head. He's going to one-hop into the wall. He's going to play it pretty nicely, though, and get it in quickly. Rodgers is not going to attempt to throw that home, though, so now it's a 9-6 to six after the RBI double. Rockies would go out to Alva Perez to try to get him out of the inning. Mike Moustakis up the lefty. He's going to pop it up on the infield. This is why Perez came in. Face a couple lefties. Votto up now. Votto's going to line it into the right field corner here, and this is going to drive home the run. Making it 10 to 6 after the RBI double from Vado. Can he get out of the inning without allowing anything else? He's going to walk Stevenson. Nick Senzel is going to line it to center field, but he would be out. 10 to 6 going into the bottom of the ninth. Rocky's calling a pinch hitter in Daza here. And a 3 1 count. He's going to line it to the left center gap, and it's going to stay up, but barely get down in front of Senzel. He's going to try to go two, but he, and he barely beats the throw, getting a double. A leadoff double, down four runs, so you got to start somewhere. Rogers going to send this to the right field corner. Castellano's going to miss another dive. He's having trouble out there in right field. They should probably just DH him. And this is going to end up being a RBI triple. 10-7 to seven now. Reds go to the bullpen again, going to Sean Doolittle. He's 9 for 9 and saves. Always facing these closers that are perfect. Eventually, we got to get one of them, right? Chris Owings is going to pinch hit for uh, the catcher. So he wouldn't stay in very long if he's going to stay in. He's just, just for this one pinch hit, he's going to ground home a run. It's 10 to 8. Got the top of the order up now, though. With one away, Toppy is going to ground to the second baseman. Now you got two away. Down to your last out. At least you got your best hitters up. Trevor Story, the 2 2 count. He's going to drive it to right field. Castellanos going back to the wall. He's going to leap, miss it, and it's going to be an, a triple here, a two out triple. So we got this tying run up at the plate. Yet again, it feels like this happens every game. Charlie Blackman up. 1-2 count. He's going to get a base hit. One run ball game just like that. 10-9. to 
Lucas Sims. They're actually going to go to the right-handed pitcher here to face Matt Adams, which is pretty questionable to me, but what do I know? Matt Adams in a 2-1 count. He's the winning run. He's got a line to center field. He hits a bullet right at Senzel, though. Reds win 10-9. Another failed rally right at the end. Ugh. Tough luck. Gomber couldn't even make it out of the third inning. You can see we were just throwing guys out there trying to get some innings out of anybody. We'd actually go on a losing streak there and lose five in a row. Going to start here with game two of the series. We lose 10 to three. Uh, just not a good game all around. Freeland got smoked, but we he had to go five innings. He actually gave up all those runs pretty much in the first inning. Game three here, we lose six to one. Not really much going on. Hilliard at least hit a home run, I guess. We didn't get shut out. Felix Hernandez, not good again. Sensatella had to eat five more innings. Like usual, we'd win the last game of the series. So we'd salvage game four, winning four to two. Marquez would get the win, going the six innings. Bard would get a save, his eighth on the year. But yeah, next time we're gonna take on the Padres again and the Diamondbacks. But remember to comment below what prospect you want us to draft. So thanks for watching. See you next time.